Dear God. <laughs> Ethan, what are you doing? <laughs> oh no, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> If you've been around this particular area of the internet, you're probably familiar with one individual by the name of Ethan Ralph. This is a man that had, at one point, perhaps one of the most watched live streams at the time on YouTube. Today, he's most uh, famous for melting the fuck down live on a stream while drinking himself into a coma, and more recently for revenge porn at his sex tape leak on the internet with a girl who's barely, just barely, 18 years old and obviously mentally ill. <laughs> it just No, this is a very sexually explicit video. I won't go into detail, but Ralph exposes his naked genitals at the camera and seems to have an incredibly small penis. Uh, I guess it's like a micro penis, giving her that pat Memphis micro, like the stud that he is. Do you like those fit? I oh well, my god, my favorite Easter lamp. Now I can see what his penis looks like. Oh, it's my fantasy come true. Show me your dick dog. I want to see his gunt flopping around like fucking vicious waves on an ocean where a storm is about to capsize a ship. Did you see the tit sweat flopping everywhere? <laughs> That's number one on the list. Now you're known for having a small dick in revenge porn. <laughs> but how did it all come to this? What led our good friend Ethan Ralph to become famous for having the world's worst gunt to dick ratio? How does this keep happening? How does all this embarrassing shit keep coming up? How is it fucking humanly possible? Well, I'd just like to say, first off, I'm going to say it outright. I'm partly responsible for this shit. You know, I've single-handedly launched his internet career. Jim hates me. Well, I mean, that, that could very, very well be true. I can't read into the, to the hearts of man, but uh, I know that uh, if you go back and look at the very earliest Gamergate videos... Uh, a, uh, certain a certain website, website uh, that, uh, that, that he was promoting, he was, promoting was called the com. and uh, <laughs> he, had he had me on, me on multiple, multiple of his streams. His streams. And, and uh, so, so I'm an old flag. You know who's an old flag? Jim. 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 That that's that, the guy that's who's the guy been around forever. forever. Uh, uh, I kind of just, just came in around Gamergate. This is like, what are you mad? I mean, people sit and oh, it's pathetic, and you know, most of these polls, you know, most of people are trolls or whatever. It's not pathetic. Literally, what got me into to all this was was him was now, him I, mean, now you know, I mean you know you know he he, he, helped, he helped put me put on the map back, back in Gamergate, Gamergate him and Milo Yiannopoulos. Um, um, so, so you know you what? what I owe that guy, owe everything, guy everything, and it it, it, it would it just, would take, just take, take just the most brutal, just the most brutal takedown for me to even consider. Responded because there really is no response, right? I mean, what can you say to that? It was all my fault. I feel fucking badly about it. Sincerely, I hope you can forgive me. I, I don't. I, I just I had just too had much respect for the guy, for the guy because, because he's, he's one of the guys who got me into the game. game. That's it. Okay. Jesus fucking Christ! Could it get any worse? Well, in fact, yes, it could, because Ethan Ralph is an alcoholic, hard drug user, who has scammed and alienated his own fan base to the point where nobody watches his content anymore. He has no redeeming qualities, nothing but negative character traits, and he's basically like a big, fat, disgusting fucking pig. You know, Ethan Ralph kind of reminds me of a mix of Wings of Redemption, Mundane Matt, Kraut and T, The Spoony One, Tonka Saw, Shia LaBeouf, Pro Jarrett, and Nick Bate. This is all that shit rolled up into one. This is every lolcom, retard, expert on the internet rolled up into one happening in real time. And all you've got to do is just watch it unfold. So I want to take you on a journey. A descent into madness. Yeah, you can already see where this is going. It's been a long time coming. It's been too long coming. That's right. It's finally happening. This is the Ballad of Ethan Ralph. Okay, buckle up, boys. Here we go. We're going balls deep. As I said before... The rise and fall of a YouTuber is a three-act story that follows a fairly typical formula. There's the meteoric rise, the plateau or the lands of plenty, and the finale. This should all sound very familiar to you. It should seem like a retread of something that you might have heard before. It's a story we're all familiar with. Ethan Ralph has gone through this three-act story several times 
In fact, he's so far past the credit sequence, playing at the very tail end of the film. We are in the empty and deserted movie theater waiting for security to choke you out and throw your ass out the door. Ethan Ralph crossed over a long time ago. His career is dead. He's a zombie now. He just doesn't realize it yet. Now with this video, I'm not going to present a chronological retelling of the rise and fall of Ethan Ralph. It's a narrative arc that's become almost cliche at this point. Instead, what I want to focus on are key aspects of his personality, his behaviors online, how he treats those around him, from his friends to his fan base, that either came about as a result of his decline or helped contribute to it. Because when you really look into who this individual is and what happened to them, it paints a very bleak picture. It's a roller coaster ride straight downward. Well, obviously, just having a sex tape out there, that's enough to ruin some people. Especially if you have a career in the public eye, it would be putting it mildly to say that it didn't help matters much for Ralph. But that's just one facet, that's just one factor of why Ethan Ralph turned out the way he did. Because he still could have had an audience that would have been loyal to him. A larger component, though, would be Ralph himself, his personality, his habits, and his appetites. These played the largest role in his spiral into insanity and irrelevance. Well, what's his uh, personality like? To really understand what key aspects of his personality led to his absolute decline, it is better to discuss this in terms of the qualities that he lacks. They all seem to fall into three different categories. The first, and perhaps most noticeable, being the glaring lack of basic self-control that he seemingly exhibits on a daily basis. In fact, you can tell just by looking at his gunt that he has a lack of will, a lack of discipline. Look at him, smeared with Dorito chips, stuffed with hamburgers from the trash can. Guzzle that down with a sugary soft drink. He didn't give a fuck. You'd think he was eating to secure the future for the obese race. But his lack of self-control runs far deeper than just his eating addiction. Ethan Ralph has a temper we're talking about. Somebody who's easily quick to anger, who lacks the ability to banter or joke with other people. If he has a dispute with you on the internet, he will go into a rage. Probably going to scream. Just start fucking yelling and there's just going to be no end to it. Because he's got some anger issues bubbling deep down inside him. Stop, you piece of shit, faggot motherfucker. No, it's not true. Piece of shit. If I had to guess, it was probably you that fucking talked to Motherfucking lying, cock-sucking faggot motherfucker. You want to all over me every fucking second? Or did you scream over you too? You piece of shit, motherfucker. Keep fucking running your mouth. I'll just keep hollering. You motherfucking piece of shit. Eat a fucking cock. Go kill yourself, you fucking piece of motherfucking shit. I fucking got he can't help it he gets a little he gets a little heated add on top of that the fact that he is one of the most impulsive people on the planet and uh <laughs> yeah you can already see where this is going he's a spurgy idiot that can't really do anything except for talk shit and never follow through with it that and sell out his own friends but he gets really fucking pissed off if you accuse him of it. He will ban you, block you, and bitch at you if you even hint at it. <laughs> and fills him with the rage of a thousand suns. Now already, with these factors, you're starting to see a recipe for disaster. Somebody who's lashing out at other people to get attention. And on top of that, they have a liquor and drug problem. These are all components to making your life go to shit quickly. This is his life now. Because he can't control his behavior. So, yeah, lack of self-control, that's our starting point. And then we've got a lack of integrity, morality, or values. He is one of these individuals that throw their morals out the window when it becomes inconvenient. There's no standard, there's no rhyme or reason, because in his mind, the best moral question is an avoided moral question. As we go forward, you will see a bit of a pattern here. Most notably with behaviors like lying when it's convenient and smearing people because... It's just too much of a bother to tell the truth. He is, at his core, a borderline sociopath that takes advantage of people for his own benefit. <laughs> this guy, he's very dedicated to his bullshit. In addition, he is extremely jealous and vindictive. He is a man that will sell you out, that will work with a corporation that hunts you down, that will flag your videos off if you look at him funny, that applies rules to everybody else but not to himself. 
He is a barren husk of a human being. And finally, we have Ethan Ralph's lack of options. When you look at his inability to do things properly or the failures as a content creator, a normal person would think, well, time to pack it up. Your career is fucking done. Normal people would probably move on to something else or find a new profession or a new hobby. However, instead, he decided to desperately cling on to his zombie corpse of a career. Now it's too late. Ethan's professional opportunities are limited. He has no technical skills whatsoever. Between his criminal record, the retarded things that he has said, and the embarrassing bullshit that this guy has posted online, potential employers will never, ever hire Ethan Ralph for any reason whatsoever for the rest of his life. He hates what he does. Can't stand doing streams, but he has to do it because that's the way he earns his income. He has no other choice in the matter. This is his lot in life. He is now stuck here forever. So now we're going to get the real story about Ethan Ralph. We're going to get into uh, the deep lore, but there is so much more cringe to explore. And it is far too large of an undertaking for me to try to go through all the events that have taken place over the last few years. There's far too much content to cover in its entirety. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit to when things get even more entertaining. I will bring up that one time. That one time Ethan Ralph might have accidentally gotten rip, roar, and drunk and assaulted. And when I say assaulted, I mean criminally assaulted a female police officer. If you want to see the full story, as we kind of skip around this stuff, feel free to go check it out. Instead, I just want to focus on a few points of interest. So I'm going to try to hit the highlights for you. Now, there are a few touchstone moments, a few key pivots in the history of Ethan Ralph that I really want to hone in on and focus on because it helps to highlight who he is now. And I think there is no better place to start when we look at the downfall of Ethan Ralph than with his feud with the YouTube user by the name of Mundane Matt that abused the flagging system on YouTube to take down Ralph's video. How fucking awful must that be to be a smaller content creator and have a bigger asshole take your content down because they can't handle what you're telling them. So we're discussing this on Ralph's stream and we get Mundane Matt to come on. Yeah, before we, we, we delve into that, I had something to say to Mundane Matt. One, earlier you asked, why would you come on? And uh, the reason is you've been deflecting and, um, you know, spinning everything so far. And two... I've been telling the yeah, truth the entire uh, time, so... No, I don't think it's the truth, but the I second don't. thing is there is a way you can show your reporting history on YouTube. I'll link it in the chat. So if you didn't do it, they should have nothing in it, correct? And Matt shows his report history. All right, here here we go. Oh, Screen geez. shares live. Let's see it. All right, hold on. My pants are off. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Matt, fine. what there are you doing? Head. How's it taking this long? Look at all those tabs. <laughs> I have a lot of tabs open, but I am Thanks, is reporting. But nothing, but nothing on. Now, wait a minute. Nothing on that. That's just. What the fuck? So. I have been in a not the best place mentally. And now, wait a minute, oh, Matt! Oh, okay. No! <laughs> Matt, no! So, yeah, that's 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 wait, it. No, that's, no, I, dude, I, wait, wait, no, I, no, wait, wait a no, minute. Matt, Cut no, back, no. bro! He fucking okay, lied to us. He no, lied to us. Dude, no, what? He lied straight to our face. He lied straight to our fucking face. For an hour. <laughs> no. <laughs> he was spinning and deflecting the entire fucking no. time. No! It's about, about... Dang no, Matt. Matt. I, I've. It's because. Matt. No, Matt. And what do you know? Monday, Matt has been flagging people nonstop to make fun of him. This basically fucking ruined Matt's career, and he lost thirteen thousand subs. Every single video Matt puts out, there's, you know, upwards of a thousand or more dislikes on it. The comment section is nothing but people making boulder jokes or calling him a flagger or telling him just to fuck off and uh, leave the internet permanently. Now, on the other hand, my good friend Ethan Ralph's channel is starting to really take off. And from there, it steadily grew. He was suddenly getting attention. He was suddenly getting views. People were paying attention to who Ralph was. And I think it's fair to say that being attacked, having his content taken down by a false flag, 
really helped to grow his channel. I mean, it was a big deal. He became an advocate pretty much overnight for free speech, free expression, fighting back against people that abuse the system. And you can see Ralph talk about this from time to time. He'll bring up the fact that Matt false DMCA'd him. Hello? Matt, what's going up, baby? Who's this? This is Ethan Ralph, man. What's going on? I just figured I'd drop you a, drop you a line here, see how things were going. What's gonna, going on? What do you want? See how you were doing? I know the Boulderversary is coming up. You remember when you ran, ruined your career on my show a couple years ago? I just wanted to see if you wanted to stop by and celebrate the festivities. Or Eventually, this leads to the film stream becoming more and more associated with a particular type of video format or style, a genre called Internet Blood Sports. That whole format where you invite people on to yell at each other and banter with one another. If somebody asks you to describe it, the easiest way to do it would be a bunch of people spurging the fuck out. Instead of the erudite, pedantic, highbrow, intellectual debate between two opposing forces who bore you to sleep and act like a living version of Ambient, Internet Blood Sports instead seeks to entertain you. It is the Jerry Springer of YouTube content. And much like Jerry Springer, there is a, a vast audience for it that likes to interact with it. This is popcorn entertainment. People are coming to watch a shit show. They want to watch two people argue with each other. They want to get involved in shit talk in the comments. Now, IBS started off with one hell of a bang, but along with its rise to popularity, the audience that comes to watch it has come along with it. Now, this is internet blood sports audience. This is a very special group of people. An exceptional league of exceptional people that like to watch the show, like to interact with it, and like to fuck around. They like to troll. That's part of the appeal of it. That's part of what draws them in. It's the participation. It's the real hook. So it's no wonder with such an intelligent fan base, they demand some motherfucking blood sacrifice every single fucking day. And if you don't give them what they want, they will sacrifice you instead. They will fucking murder you. Ethan Ralph learned that lesson the hard way because eventually, inevitably, he ran out of sacrifices to make. The audience then turns to troll like Ethan Ralph in retaliation. Godspeed, you're on the air. Go ahead, sir. Hey, hey what's going on, bro? Nothing much, man. What's up? Just, uh, just chilling. Um, no. Didn't people, do uh, in front of me, people so. are people are being really uh, aggressive towards you and Andy. They're they're saying uh, they keep asking the same question, and I, I guess I should ask it too. They they want to know why you're becoming the mundane mad of stream me. Uh, is that what you're asking? Yeah, that's the that's what a lot of people keep repeating. I keep hearing it constantly. I'm just wondering if you feel that you're slowly becoming the mundane mad of stream. No, I don't feel that. I mean, are you becoming the the fat faggot of streaming? No, I'm just I'm asking because like people keep saying that like uh, like you're just like reading the news and not having guests anymore or stuff like that. And I don't know why people are so angry at you. Like they're always talking about how like your show is gonna die and, and how you're getting less callers every day. And they hate Andy. They want us all to hate each other. They call you Monday Matt. They call Gator uh, a wannabe uh, Jim. Say he's discount Jim with a they call retarded you, speaking scholarship. And they call you a pedophile. That trolling leads to more aberrant behavior. And that aberrant behavior alienates the audience even more. Yeah, but I don't know what the fuck SoCal Chris. You know what SoCal Chris? You can suck my fucking dick. You're in the chat saying all kinds of fucking shit. Bring your fucking ass on this goddamn show and say that shit to my fucking face, motherfucker. Talking shit to me? Suck my goddamn fucking dick. That's what I would say to you. And soon his audience learned that Ethan Ralph can't take a fucking joke. We're talking super thin skin motherfuckers. Ethan Ralph cannot handle being made fun of. A case in point would be this photo. This is a photo of lollycon pedophile advocate Dick Masterson, coach abortion, Hill, and some other faggot together with Ethan Ralph in Knoxville, Tennessee. Do you notice anything about this photo? Hold it. Run that back. Wait a minute. Go right. There, freeze that. Full screen. Okay, freeze that. Zoom in right here on the spot. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed it yet, but just a tad bit over to the right. You're gonna notice something. You've just gotta, you gotta zoom in a little bit. Clean that up. Zoom in a little bit more. As you can see, that's Ralph's gut, and he is just putting it out there for the world to see. I want you to take in the magnificence of this photo. Words almost fail to describe it. Look at the size of Ralph's gut. 
Holy fucking shit. That is so disgusting. Bruh. Look at this dude. Oh. <laughs> Wait till you see this. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Look at that big old gun! <laughs> oh, look at that tum tum! <laughs> That's a big gun! Love that belly! Looking like a big old tub of fucking reanimated cookie dough! Fucking pathetic! Absolutely fucking pathetic! Ethan was not uh, not coping with a banter too well. Because it's quite obvious that he envisioned himself as going into a new direction of producing an actual web show based around mocking other people's failures rather than his own. Unfortunately for him, he just was not very good at it. And with an ego like his, it becomes easy to understand why it is he resorts to banning people, blocking comments, and doxing his pay pigs. He likes to start drama to get attention. Like a fucking uh, a lynch or something, just feed off that negative energy. And over time, this overwhelming amount of negativity spreads like a virus, like a disease, and infects everyone around him. Everybody that has defended him uh, has had a negative reaction from the public. Everybody that's defended him has lost subscribers and followers. People like Dick Masterson, Andy Worski, Dame Pesos, name after name after name. Ethan Ralph is like the never-ending saga of bad decisions, just making it worse for literally everyone involved. He doesn't give a shit. The only thing he really seems to care about is himself, but nonetheless, he's got good, loyal people that always stand by his side. What he doesn't seem to care about is actually reciprocating that, the takeaway from this enormous goddamn list of people that he betrayed or he's straight up burned is that he is not loyal to anyone unless you happen to have something that he wants. And for that reason, you'll find that he's not very well liked. A lot of people fucking hate him and all of this shit just makes people hate him more. Anybody with a brain knows that you have to shop at the big and tall store, faggot. The, the thing that made me angry was the fucking text messages this fat, greasy-wristed bastard sent me afterwards. Uh, they were fucking retarded, and he knows damn good and well that he would not say that shit to my fucking face, okay? You can't stick your thumb in my asshole, fat man. It's not gonna fucking happen, all right? <laughs> And like, so fuck that guy. If he tries to act like I'm all mad because of the call, he's a fucking liar. He's a fucking little queer. Okay, is what he is. And he's a he's always talking about loyalty, loyalty this, loyalty that. But how, what kind of loyalty does he show to anybody else? What about you, Rand? Does he show you any loyalty? I didn't fucking think so. And like, you know, it's just fuck that guy. 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 The criticism started to pour in. And that sentiment began to spread. It spread so much that Ralph's gunt ended up becoming a genre in and of itself. And we call that gunt posting. I do it all the time. I love it. Ethan, it is me, the third man. Yes, I'm your father. And I had to abandon you. Look at your gaunt. Moreover, Ralph's gaunt was the inspiration for an entire genre of trippy electronic music. This is what we call gaunt wave. Here's a little, a little sampling. This is an artist by the name of Ear Juice. That is some next level shit right there. This is, this is, I'm, my mind is just fucking kapow. But people were proving a point that you could totally fuck with Ethan Ralph and he couldn't really do anything about it. Anybody could show up and fuck with him. Now this wouldn't have been a problem for people that have a normal fucking sense of humor and can take a joke. But Ethan is one of these people that takes themselves so fucking seriously. He cannot cope with the negative criticisms that come his way. He is going to act like this is some persecution. 
and that seething anger because of it makes Ethan lash out at anybody and everybody around him, from his friends to his fan base. This, of course, began a cycle, a cycle which is commonplace on the internet when a content creator begins to attack their own audience. Uh, Ralph seems to be kind of fighting with his audience, which is never a smart idea. A lot of, a lot of fighting back and forth. Uh, I think it's probably a bad idea to turn on your audience. It doesn't work out for anybody. It didn't work out for Baked. Uh, and I would not recommend doing that. People began to shit-talk him on social media. They began to make threads on forums and image boards, all talking about what the hell was Ralph's problem. Why was he being a giant pussy? And why couldn't he take the criticism that they wanted to give him? Due to his own arrogance, his own hubris, and his own mistreatment of his audience, he saw his popularity and his profits begin to sink. This is a man just looking to host debates, who wanted to show the internet a good shit show, who wanted to put on a good internet blood sport for the audience to enjoy. The formula is pretty straightforward. All you gotta do is not implode. Put on a show, read the Superberries, and call it a night. But alas, it was far too much to ask from our good friend Ethan Ralph. That would be too much work. That would require having self-control, and that is something that he simply refuses to do. And so Ethan found himself in a situation where he was the one being made fun of. He became pretty much the subject of his own content. He was the lol cow now. And Ralph did not handle the criticism very well. He went into a bit of a depressive spiral, and it caused psychological trauma at a deeper level. And so because of that, he began to drink more and more to try to cope with the situation. But it was his love of alcohol and drugs and his dependency on them, all helping to fuel his own self-imposed nightmare. You're going to start to notice a few trends. Those trends usually revolve around his alcoholism. All you need to do is watch a few of his videos and you can see just how absolutely blackout drunk he will get. Nathan! What? Get up! Okay, I'm getting up. You're not getting up. What's happening? Turn off. In the morning? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna swear. You better take the day off you stuck a lot last night. Way in your pan. Hand up. Well, it's good. I had about two minutes more to sleep. Yeah, I did. Do you know that? It's not true. And it was during these streaming moments where you got a better insight into the hunger, the appetite this individual has, and just how much he relies on liquor, and even more than that, hard drugs to survive. This actually all culminates with one of the biggest disasters in internet history, something that would become known as the pill stream. Take a moment to just to get a mental image of this going on. Imagine a completely sloppy fucking drunk, disheveled, smelly, dirty Ethan Ralph. So utterly fucking drunk and on pills, he's lost his shit. He can't even string together coherent sentences. So we'll do it. Do you have, do you have, do you have a problem with me now or what's up? I mean, you said what you were going to do. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, what are you going to do? What are you, what are you talking about? You said, do you want to do this now, here or now? Yeah, and I you, said yeah, and then you said yeah. I'm gonna do what I want to do. We'll go ahead and do it. Do what? Uh, well, why don't you uh, test your luck? Test my luck with what? Do it. No, I don't do want to drag it. I don't want to drag it up in front of nah, people. Nah, man. Dude. Nah, you just threaten me. If you have a problem with me, we you, can you, take care you of it off air. You just threaten me on air. Why don't you bring it up on air? When did I threaten not, you on air? Ralph, he's not. He's not threatening you on air, dude. You said, "Oh, I don't think it'll be good if it's on air." Well, put it on air. Yeah, because it's well, no, not. He's, it's no, never a good idea. He to said, "I don't think it's a good idea." What you Ralph, didn't have a Ralph, you didn't have a problem with it Ralph, on Monday, Ralph, 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 Ralph. But it did get worse. <laughs> I don't know why you're. I, do you want me to put you over, or do you just Ralph, want me to say? Okay. Dude, dude, shit let's, down just, your let's just stop. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, please let's just chill stop. out. Let's stop. Let's let's not go down this road, buddy. All right, all right <laughs> let's just, just. No, it's not. There's always time to stop. 
It's time to stop! Yeah? What is even What is even happening here, Gator? He's like mumbling in the background. He's got that kind of the drunk slur that's going on. Uh, Zidane said, put this old broken leg out of this misery already. New York Bucks says, Narcotics Anonymous, Memphis, Tennessee. I don't live in Memphis, suck so my dick. Cog, you got a lo license for those pills, mate? New York Book says editor and owner of the Ralph Rehab. OJ Simpson says we can't hear the Discord, you N word. Mr. Medicare says Ralph, fix yourself. Good God. I don't think that was the actual Mr. Medicare, although possible. Uh, New York Book says welcome to the pill stream. You can hear the pill jingling and like the bottles clanking and shit. Damn. I don't know what to tell you guys. It's, kind of uh, I, it's not really my fault, but I'm sorry. I did not lie to troll you or anything like that. And, you know, I, I'm not happy about it either. It just seems like. It just seems like everything Ralph, is falling that. through that I try to do. And I'm uh, just yeah, like, I'm taking the aspirin, having to listen to this fucking shit. <laughs> just fucking completely unhinged. I can't even imagine um, an angle where I would be salty towards Jim. So, was Jim actually in the chat? I know it's been a while. I think he's probably content to just kind of watch. Yeah, yeah, well, that's probably. the thing. Other people don't understand. I'm not trying to, you know, suck Jim's ass or whatever, but every time somebody sees Jim, they're like, oh, get him on, get him on. And, of course, people love hearing him, and he's funny, and Jim made me untold thousands of dollars, and I will always appreciate him for that. Um, I love Jim, and I would never be mad if he never showed up on this show again. I wouldn't be small. I, I wouldn't be mad at all. I don't be think he hates you, Ralph. No, he doesn't. I mean, what the fuck? That's stupid. But I'm saying, if he did, I would not be mad. I would say, oh, wow, Jim, you know what? Gee, what? Thanks for the fucking retirement fund. I really appreciate your help. Why would he put himself on the line any more than he already did? Do you know how many times he appeared on the kill stream last year? At least 20 or 30. And so he did every single thing he could to help me, and I will for always be grateful to him for that and you can clip that out and put that on the clip channels and yeah. and that might sound gay i'm pretty sure he would call that wow <laughs> well that sounds like gay as fuck you would be correct thanks for the blowjob faggot the fuck off my dick well he clearly has a liquor and drug problem i spent more on spilt liquor than most of you motherfuckers spilt on new shoes he abuses Xanax or opioid prescriptions on a daily basis. You can't fix an addict. You know, I saw him go through his alcoholism thing, and then he sobered himself up, and he's saucing it up again, okay. But can you really blame him? I would be too if I were Ethan Rell. Give the man a drink. So there you go. That's what that's what people were talking about. Ethan Ralph lost his shit and had a meltdown. And that's a tough trauma to live with. Luckily, his wife can relate. Well, at least he's got his girl by his side. He's got a good, a good woman by his side who's going to take care of the bills and give him the space he needs to recover mentally to, I don't know, go out there and get a job or do something or just crawl out of his funk until she leaves him. Shortly afterwards, his wife, Nora, decides that she's getting a divorce. This screed written by our Lord's fair hand reads the final farewell. Almost five years, years ago, I met the best person I've ever known. And ordinarily, it wouldn't be any of your business what goes on in my marriage. But I've gotten divorced. We still love and care for each other. And we'll always be friends. <laughs> A lot of speculation and rumors and gossip. I don't know if he really saw this coming from his wife. And I'm thinking, perhaps...
that he got cucked when she cheated on him with his backstabbing co-host. I've heard people make fun of him because his wife fucked a bunch of right, Probably right, fucked a black right, dude right, who's right, super fit. Right. <laughs> he should have seen it coming. He's going to use that $10 you've accidentally sent him to buy a really nice gift for his wife's, I'm sorry, ex-wife's black boyfriend. Would you all like to, would you all like to see uh, the, the woman that cucked him? Look at her. This is his wife. Oh, 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 oh no. <laughs> Simply fetching. <laughs> she looks like she's a big girl, too. Yeah, that's right, chat. Thick. There you go. Now, if you paid close attention, you may have noticed a lot of fat women. A lot of hefty girls in his harem. A lot of fat bitches nobody wants to fuck. I think our friend here likes big, fat, dumb animals. He's got a fat fetish. He goes for those big, beautiful women. I'm not, I can't, I'm having trouble imagining that she's getting a lot of dick. But apparently this motherfucker got cucked by a chick the size of a Yeti. You know, if she was street legal, she'd be a 4x4. This bitch is huge. It's unknown how many guys she fucked, but it is at least nine, apparently, from things that were posted. And then on top of that, some have speculated they married over visa fraud. Ethan Rell's wife came from the Middle East. And he brought her over here and went through the visa program and uh, got her legalized or put on at least a temporary visa. And she goes out and immediately started fucking everything under the sun and cheating on Ethan Rell. It appears that it was intended to be a fraudulent, glow-in-the-dark sham marriage. And I'm not saying this is what they're doing. I'm just saying, looking at it, that's how it appears. Ethan Ralph's like a meme at this point. He has been humiliated in front of the world. Ethan is a drunk and his wife is a slut and with the loss of his YouTube channel, his dignity, and his income. He's got no reason to live his life. It is a remarkable implosion to have watched in real time. How could this get fucking worse? Ugh. Oh. But at least it's over. The destruction of everything that he held sacred and dear is a, a pretty good reason to see that you'd be leaving the show. You'd figure that would be the end of it. That he would slink back under a rock and hide away forever. But you would be so very, very wrong. Because as anybody who's been on the internet long enough knows, autism is unstoppable. Ethan ended up adding fuel to the fire through his tweeting and his social media outrage at the reaction he was receiving. It created a negative feedback loop. Somebody would say something he didn't like, he'd respond to it, and it would encourage other people to say something as well. Um, I see Nick Ricada, I guess, tweeted at me on Twitter. Uh, I'll pretty much reiterate what I said there. Just because he keeps Josh Moon's dick in his mouth doesn't mean I will, and I never will. Um, he could run mm. his own fucking shit, and I'll run my shit. You know, if he has some more GoFundMes he wants to start up that fail, that's cool. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Click the links in the description. Go read up on it. It is fascinating. His internet history and spurgery is very, very entertaining, and there are multiple sites that will cater to your interest with different screen caps and background story. I want you to, again, as you're watching this, please remember, please, please, please remember that this man spends the majority of his time fighting internet slap fights, and that inferno has been burning for years. Take, for example, his pissing match with some crazy troll by the name of People's Populist Press, also known as PPP. <laughs> That'll have to be another video for a different day. I, I gotta admit though, PPP, you won, hands down. I thought you, you, you came out uh, on top on that one. Fucking eviscerated, annihilated, utterly fucking destroyed Ethan Ralph. And then Ralph got into a slap fight with Joshua Moon, the fucking owner of the website, Kiwi Farms. All because Josh says Ethan Ralph must be sacrificed to the corn. Okay, I, I don't dislike Ralph, but it may be time to sacrifice Ralph to the corn. We have to sacrifice Ralph, Ethan Ralph, to the gods so that the corn will be a bountiful harvest this year. Because I think he has, he has so much bad blood with all these people who fucking hate him. That it may be the only solution. We have to sacrifice Ethan Ralph for the harvest. Josh likened his remarks to jokes, calling them harmless ribbing. Ralph took it personally anyway and got shitter shattered. Yeah, you can't really go out there asking to get shit talked and then get upset when somebody obliges, can you? If you have such a grudge or umbrage with Josh, invite Josh on. What a little beta bitch boy. And he's, he's fighting fucking everybody in the replies. Just absolutely everybody, anybody that says anything to him, gets very upset.
He's got that he's got that fire in his belly, and he's just he's looking for a fight. And we call that manlet rage. He is the kind of person that's so hated by even his close circle of friends that they dump chat logs of the things he says in private. They didn't just post them in one place. They posted them all over the place. Chat log after chat log after chat log of people who can't stand his ass and want you to see how retarded he is when he's talking in private. People were writing articles about this, laughing at how stupid he is. People were wanting to make videos about him. All of the sudden, from out of nowhere, a complete and utter coincidence, videos started getting flagged that were making fun of Ethan Ralph. A lot of people saying that Ralph and Co. flagged PPP. That's rather strange. It's almost like when Matt did his uh, big oopsie. Really gets the old noggin jogging. Pretty clear indication that this was Monday Matt. Seems about his speed. <laughs> Seems about the thing he would do. But not Ethan Ralph, because he's based. He is way better than Monday Matt. He would never do something like that. He didn't do nothing. He's a good boy. He's innocent, right? Right? You see, Ralph's not a hypocrite. He has standards and morals which he deeply adheres to. Ethan Ralph would never have... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, he did. Oh, that's embarrassing. Well, that strikes me as a bit hypocritical. But it did get worse. I said fuck it. Flag everything this guy has ever posted on YouTube. Uh, and I don't feel bad saying that. Uh, I saw some people say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Way to lose the high ground, Ralph. I don't give a fuck about the high ground. Fuck you, motherfucker. I want you to get flagged. I want you to lose your channel. I want you to lose everything. I want you and that little fucking retarded hobo Jew that you fuck every night to be out on the goddamn streets. That's what I want. My opinion hasn't changed. I, I think flagging shit's gay. The, the issue I've always had with that, and the thing that always annoyed me about it is, if you start taking people down, then there's nobody left to argue with. This is Monday and Matt all over again. This is way worse. Because it's so fucking obvious. It's so obvious. It's humiliating. So he's upset that he's getting made fun of. He's getting down votes and comments saying that he's an idiot. That's, what he, that's what's up his ass. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like being not taken seriously. Look at the amount of people that he's gone after. Anybody so much as looking at him funny, he will flag your channel down. Strikingly, Monday Matt dealt with the exact same thing. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to leave our Corey King out of this amazing story. He deserves credit. I've seen him talk. I've seen him accept responsibility for his own fuck ups. He made himself look like an asshole, and people wrote him very hard for that. That's what I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you, how does Ralph setting himself on fire? somehow change what happened to you in the past oh nothing changes what happened in the past that's the thing you, you can never go backwards you can always go forward that's about it so acknowledging the past is one thing not doing it again is another learning from your mistakes is the key factor my, my report history has not changed in two years oh i bet it hasn't man i really hope you learned your lesson there that's the thing is like i got fucking mad at idiots and i acted stupidly that's been known and i've owned up to that shit the key difference though between me and let's say ethan ralph is that like i went out i got fucking therapy i haven't had a drink of alcohol in over a year i'm on antidepressants for my anxiety and i've been evening myself the fuck out and well, that's working good. To better my life and my fucking family i'm that's genuinely glad to hear that and he's come a long way since then. Look at him. Finally got a job. Finally got a paycheck. Working a side job as like an Uber driver or something like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But this is a good narrative arc that he's building. A redemption story. And you've taken a victory lap, Matt. And you know what? You took your licks for so long that you actually gained a shred of respect from me. And I even think in certain cases, especially with the doxing and the fucking prank phone calls and shit, that it went overboard. I don't think you fucking deserved any of that. Um... Okay, I'll give you a victory lap. And like I said, I've run your name through the fucking mud. I thought it'd only be fair. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> well, your juice has, ta has talked me into to, to working with Jarbo the Hut, so that's going to be fascinating. Really? I'm doing that for yeah, yeah. I'm going to be doing uh, I'm going to be doing the actual vocals for another rendition of Better Than Me. I don't mind the art. You know what I mean? Like if the thing with the with the last two years has been very fascinating is that people have created a lot of art. There's been two musical albums made about me tons of memes tons of other things like that and i and i appreciate as weird as it is to say i appreciate the art i okay. appreciate the work that goes into it yeah it's weird 
but it's like I've never been mad at the memes. And that deserves a C for congratulations. Give him a C. He's earned it. Our boy's been through a lot of shit. Dealing with those fucking trolls, those detractors, those A-logs, all that bullshit. He's come out smelling like roses. Meanwhile, our good friend, Ethan Ralph, he's just barely scraping the fucking bottom of the barrel. At this point, he has fallen so far that Darkseid Phil, DSP Gaming, is making more money than Ethan Ralph is. That is fucking mind-blowing. <laughs> We're seeing crazy shit take place right now that I don't think anybody thought was going to be... I don't think anybody thought, yeah, that's what 2020 is going to be like. The season's starting to blur together a little bit, but I guess that's expected. We're near the season finale for the year. So just to recap... I've talked about him targeting different individuals, flagging their videos, or doxing them, or spreading their information. About him manipulating and deceiving everyone around him in an attempt to use them as a tool to further his own goal. As time goes on, new rationalizations will appear that will justify him doing just about any atrocity you can possibly imagine. You know what? I'll make your fucking bitch famous if, that, if that's what I you want. want. If that's what you want, I, I will do that. I will make this bitch famous. Is that what you want, Valsh? Is that what you want? For me to make your nasty ass fucking bitch famous because oh, I will, and I will, whoa, and I will whoa, laugh just, about it. You're threatening to dox my girlfriend? No. Yeah. We wouldn't do yeah, that. No. 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 I will put, her, I will put her name out. I don't give a fuck about you or anybody else listening to this stream. Yeah, I will dox that fat bitch. I don't give no. a fuck All about right. her. Nothing's too dirty for Ethan or Elf. Well, that's what brings us to the subject of this final act. I think we're getting to the to the the finale of Ethan Ralph's shameful, sad, depressing, but uh, utterly hilarious fucking story. Uh, so, yeah, uh, backstory on this is after he had uh, announced the divorce on Twitter, all this information comes out talking about Ralph grooming and messaging some seventeen-year-old girl on the internet, really biding his time on this one, planning it out perfectly. Found himself a, a nice little lady, a little lady by the name of Faith. Ethan Ralph wanted to fuck that underage girl. And so Ralph, in his infinite wisdom, decided the best course of action was to basically kidnap and forcibly impregnate Faith. A lot of allegations of him flying girls out over state lines, or going over state lines. But it looks like he waited until after this girl's 18th birthday. I'm going to say that's a lie. You'll see why I believe that's a lie in just a few minutes. It's a rumor for now, but just, just give it a little time. And we'll see if it's, uh, if it's true or not. But regardless of who you believe in this entire menagerie of opinions, clearly this man is a sex offender. So Faith is currently sitting in her corn cage. Uh, essentially what happened was the parents heard about what was going on and they are, not, uh, they are not happy. I will tell you that much. Ethan basically told them to fuck off. All right, I'm taking your daughter out. I'm going to fuck her. <laughs> I'm not going to listen to any of your shit. They've had many back-and-forth conversations. They've gone at each other on Twitter and time and time again. What, what the fuck has happened to you as a parent when you find yourself in that situation? God, can you imagine the nightmare of waking up in the morning? And your little daughter, your little girl, is out there getting fucked by a big, fat fucking YouTuber running his stupid goddamn mouth on Twitter. Oh, they love that. But I'm sure they loved it even more when a few of the other choice quotes started to surface in the media. Uh, in those original July tweets, uh, he'd come back out and posted that, oh, you beat your daughter and shit, but it's why he removed it, because right after he did that, and I said, saddle up your lawyer, son, because that's defamation, uh, that's when Faith went to him and said, no, he, he never did that. What gets me is that a lot of teenage girls obviously say stuff they don't mean. They will tell lies, white lies and stuff like that. What gets me is that Ethan Ralph is 16 years her senior, and maybe he should have fact-checked that instead of broadcasting it over his Twitter of 50,000 followers on a verified account. And, and, and to be clear uh, on your last comment, we absolutely hold Ethan Ralph more uh, culpable to this entire freak show than we hold our daughter. And if, yeah. this, and if this can get in any way to his fucking piece of shit mother... I do not know how that woman sits there as another mother knowing what's going on in the room next to her. I would say that the white trash apple does not fall farther from the white trash tree. This would be the perfect Lifetime TV movie. This is the sort of shit 
that a 90s television producer loves. Oh, my God. It's got everything. Make it into a TV movie. Let's make it a miniseries. Put it on ABC for eight nights in a row. Uh, spoiler alert. It's about a father who kills his daughter's boyfriend. I would watch that shit every day. What are my chances of a happy ending? Well, there's going to be an ending. I just don't know if it's going to be happy. And we soon began to see Faith's next boyfriend a self-admitted pedophile. He starts posting on social media talking about how Faith is the woman that he loves and he will try to win her back in any way that he possibly can. I mean, hell, we've all heard this script before. Hollywood pumps these out by the dozens. We're talking a romantic comedy. Here's this poor schmuck that's in love with a girl that found somebody else and he's going to win her back. What could possibly be more romantic than that? She must have been just awestruck by his dedication to her. He also stated that Ralph and Faith never had sex the moment that he starts to post his evidence, Ethan released his own statement. Well, uh... Ralph is messaging me right now. Let's see what this does. go. Ethan was kind enough to share their sex tape with the entire internet. Ralph inserted himself into a community, got into a fight with the people involved in it, and released a video that was basically child pornography that would end up making him look bad and potentially getting him into legal trouble. Oh my god, what are you doing, Ralph? What are you doing? Now you're known for having a small dick in revenge porn. The key is to find something to do outside of YouTube, but Ralph's got nothing else going on. A convicted felon, He's, you know, that he does, he, he's got a, he's got such a name that's run into the mud. I mean, it's like, there's no coming back from this for Ethan. Now, let me spill the beans and sausage here regarding dipshit Gunt's tiny instrument. Yes, he is a man. He has a dick, but my oh my, I should have brought a magnifying glass because when fully erect, if you can even call it erect, it was hardly four inches long, but I guess that was what he was born with. So I can't blame him for that. Has nobody learned from pro Jared? Who, who does that? Don't ever ever record yourself having sex, it will come back to haunt you. Don't trust anyone. It's going to come out eventually. Inevitably. It's going to end up on the internet, and people are going to start judging you for it. You're never going to be able to hide that shit. you got to use my technique. Audio only. And then you tell them it's yoga. <laughs> and you get away with it. There's no visual evidence for people to get confused about. Just a little life advice from me. Oh, people say, yeah, that's apparently on Kiwi Farms. If, if you want to watch all the hot, grizzled, girthy, gunt sex tape action, go on over to Kiwi Farms. Ethan Ralph's just fucking falling like a boulder. I don't even, I don't even know how to describe it. Just sinking uncontrollably on his metrics. There's no recovery from this. His penis is plastered on at least 20 different websites. I'd like to remind you that Ethan is a man who built his entire show on the kill stream on making fun of Monday Matt and making fun of retards on the internet. And here he is, completely broken by the internet. Unable to handle banter, unable to handle jokes, unable to handle an opinion that runs contrary to his or criticism of his own opinions. Ethan Ralph cannot take the banter. If you say something bad about him, he's going to come after you. Look at him. He is a raging lunatic. The story of Ethan Ralph is a story of a man who refused to come to the realization that his time is over, and something that he refused to come to grips with. He didn't want to accept the fact that any legacy he has will be overshadowed by the sideshow that he has become, because that is what we're looking at. Just another in a long line of retards on the internet. That's what this man's legacy is. He is a walking punchline. It's uncertain exactly where Ethan Ralph will be a year from now, or even two years from now. People like him go fucking batshit bonkers and either overdose on drugs, or get arrested, or fade into the gutter because they end up homeless. Uh, realistically, if I had to put money on it, my money would be on suicide. He's probably going to overdose on bills and kill himself on a live stream on YouTube. 
But wherever that destination may well take him, it's a trip that Ralph embarked on himself. It's his own actions and behaviors, the path that he took on the internet, that led him to where he is now and where he's going to end up. Ethan Ralph might be the most clear-cut example of what not to do as you navigate your way around this particular area of the internet. And so when you look at the sum of it all, what's the conclusion that you come to? You can take it however you want it. You can view it as a cautionary tale for things that you should seek to avoid. However, it's a story we're all familiar with. There's nothing that I can tell you that's going to be a surprise. In an insane world full of inane bullshit, the story of Ethan Ralph stands out as especially fucking retarded. There's nothing you can learn from it, because anybody with common sense would look to avoid the pitfalls and the mistakes that he made with his life. And so I feel it best, rather than to view it as a purely cautionary tale, to instead point and laugh at what a failure Ethan Ralph is. So just sit back and relax and enjoy the shit show and watch this thing go up in flames. If you really care about this man, the best thing you can do is make him feel ashamed about his life. And hopefully shame this gentleman into getting his life in order. And if you want to ensure nobody wants to be like him, make sure that they laugh at him. Because nobody wants to be a joke. Either way, clearly mockery and shame is the best approach to deal with these kinds of individuals. And that was pretty much fucking everything that I wanted to say about that. Well, I can't exactly say I'll miss this untalented, fat little soy-filled gunt. It's been quite the little journey. It has been very, very entertaining to watch. Ethan Ralph spiral down into the dark abyss that he himself has crafted, and he has nobody but himself to blame. So I guess all I can say is, thanks for the laughs, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you fucked up, man. You should have listened to me. It's too late now. You're done. It's not true. <laughs> Fuck. Oh. Oh. Okay. 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 Bye bye. Yeah.